in the workshop my twin cylinder Stuart 5A steam engine. Very occasionally engines that I work on I really do take a fancy to and I like this a lot. It's two individual Stuart models 5A steam engines fitted back to back. It's not a Stuart Signet or Swan engine because those type of engines share a common sole plate. The sole plate is the part where the crankshaft fits. This pair of 5As have two single 5A crankshafts joined using a clever coupling in between the two engines. And the connection is just two sprockets back to back with a chain that joins the two. And this allows for a small amount of flexibility in movement which is obviously going to happen unless the sole plates were accurately mounted to a very thick piece of metal. Having worked on this engine a while back as I've just mentioned I was very impressed by the builder. It all turns over very smoothly. It's fitted with twin Stuart water pumps, has a matching pair of mechanical lubricators at each end and an oil reservoir box in the centre. The centre oil reservoir box is fitted with wicks and this lubricates the main bearings and the crosshead. This engine originally belonged to a friend of mine and when he bought it it was crudely mounted on a piece of board and there were various small mechanical anomalies with it which I put right and I made a series about this if you want to watch it, I'll give you the details later. Apart from the engine needing some TLC, tender loving care if you don't know what that means, there were bits of copper pipe sticking out of it in all directions, as well as having massively overscaled drain cock taps, and it also had a very large pair of taps fitted right in the middle of the cylinders. So I removed the centre valves from the cylinders and fitted blanking plugs. Here you see how free the reversing gear is. This engine was definitely made by a proper engineer and it's built to a very high standard. The engine's been built from two complete 5A casting sets from Stuart Models, including two water pumps, which it doesn't really need. To be honest, two water pumps is a bit over the top. But I intend to fit them with common piping, so they will work together and pump a lot of water. It will be very interesting to see whether my coal-fired Castle V6 steam boiler can provide enough steam to make this go. As soon as we get a bit of decent weather when it's not blowing a gale, I will test it all in the garden. What follows is an excerpt from part 9 of the series. The details are on screen. There's not much wear at all in these bearings. Everything's in very good order. This central oil box is a really good idea for lubricating the bearings, but the oil I'm using is too thin and it's really running far too fast down the pipes. Using a thin oil is a good idea in one respect, because it does penetrate between the bearing surfaces, but if it's too thin, it just runs everywhere, and that's what's happening at the moment. Once the oil box has drained, I'll get some thicker oil. In practice, if you think about it, with this oil box between the cylinders, getting warmed up by the cylinders, steam oil would probably work quite well, as the heat of the cylinders would make it flow better, but not when running on compressed air. Mounted on each of the cylinders is a dedicated mechanical lubricator for that particular cylinder, and both of these work very well indeed. In this clip I'm manually turning the handle on the lubricator, and you can actually feel it as the oil gets pumped into the cylinder. The mechanical lubricators are doing about two clicks per revolution, which seems about right, it's not over oil in the cylinders. And same as the other side, if I wind the handle by hand, then I can feel the pulse as it goes over the stroke where air is in the cylinder, where it's pumping against pressure. Time to stop playing with the engine now and get some more work done. Quite an important job is to pipe up the drain taps, so I cut two pieces of copper tube to length. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter copper tube, and once I've done that, I silver solder some union nipples on the end. These copper pipes are not trimmed to length, they're about 6 inches longer than they need to be, and this is to allow me to get my hand on them to bend them near the ends. So I've bent the first bit, the bit that goes to the tap, and now I have to follow it down and bend the bit at the other end. This video is really speeded up, and you can see how many times I fit and refit the part till I get it exactly right, and when it looks like this, it's exactly right. So here are the two pipes. I put a temporary brass collar on, but I didn't like the look of that. I've got a better idea. So one side done, and I'm now doing the second half. 
exactly the same principle, many fits and refits until I get it to look right. It needs something to hold the two pipes together like this, so they're up against the column. And I was going to use a piece of boiler banding, but that looked a bit too fussy. So what I'm going to do instead is measure the centres, and you can't see, but my left hand is actually holding the pipes together, and the centres are at half an inch. I just made two brass pieces to hold the pipes together, and then I soldered them to the pipes, so you could take the pipes off and they will retain their shape. Here's a close-up shot of the lubricator for the cylinder, and as I said, it goes past two, but sometimes it goes past one ratchet, but either way, it's lubricating the cylinder perfectly. Because I've already made a nine-part series about the renovation of this engine, I don't see the point in making any more, although I will show the making of an exhaust extension and running it on steam. I was very pleased to be in a position to acquire this engine, because when I worked on it, I really did like it, and it's great to have it as part of my collection. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Thank <laughs> you.